this time we will talk about the Greek gift sacrifice. So this is pretty common in amateur level games and in the end of this video you will be able to put in practice those concepts. So let's jump to our video. But before that, did you know that almost 87% of the viewers isn't subscribed? Why don't you like me? I'm a great person and my uh, goal is to help you to improve. So to help this channel to grow, I just need you a little favor uh, is to subscribe. And of course, if you want to continue seeing the new content that I put every day, you can always push the notifications on. And of course, if you want to see different stuff or even if you want me to correct something that you don't enjoy you can always put on the comments below and you can always talk with me by chess.com my nickname is dark underline attack i always answer so thanks a lot don't forget subscribe so let's jump to our video so about our greek gift sacrifice first we need to know what is that well uh, the Greek gift sacrifice is a sacrifice of a bishop. And as the name says, uh, is, is Greek gift uh, because of uh, the Trojan horses of uh, the old Gre Greece. And as the tales say, uh, because of the Trojan horse, um, they have uh, lost the, the battle on those days because uh, the soldiers were inside of the Tro Trojan horse. I'm not pretty good at history, but it's something like that. And that's the reason because uh, this has this name. Because we will sacrifice a bishop. For example, this, this is our um, model example. And we will sacrifice a bishop. And after that, we will be able to create a lot of problems to our opponents. I will give you the um, requisite everything today. So uh, this will be very good if you don't know how to apply this Greek gift sacrifice. So first step, we will sacrifice the bishop. And of course, here black has two answers. Of course, if the black king doesn't take the bishop, we have one, one pawn, so this isn't problematic for white because, yeah, we are already winning. And even uh, though uh, here we can continue with knight g5 and the queen will enter on h5 square, uh, creating problems. So this is pretty complicated. For example, even if black tries to play g6, uh, we can always enter by h3. So this position is already completely won. So uh, here it's important to see what happens after bishop takes and king takes. And very, very important. This concept, first, this works because it doesn't exist hypothesis of playing a knight to f6 or f8. Second rule. Uh, sorry, first rule. Second rule we are controlling the g5 square. Second rule. Third rule. We have access to the h5 square with our king, uh, our queen, sorry. So, because of those three reasons, and even because of the fact that the queen is uh, locked, uh, the pieces uh, are um, on the other side, you will have the capacity of winning this game with this sacrifice. So, after king takes, we will continue with knight g5, giving check, and here we have two possibilities. If king plays to g8, we will continue with queen to h5, threatening to give checkmate in one move. And here, of course, uh, to prevent losing right now the game. The rook needs to play here or else, just to show, this will uh, terminate on a checkmate. Uh, will finish, sorry. So, and if rook plays to e8, it's the same. This position is completely won. Here, we can continue with, for example, queen h7. And after king plays to f8, we just need to calculate a little bit uh, and we will reach uh, 
a very very good position for white uh, here i think we don't have checkmate but we will win always material so uh, when we do the greek gift sacrifice we uh, need to have some advantage we can play to give checkmate or we win material if you can't do neither of those uh, two ex expects that's because it isn't a great greek gift it's a blunder so <laughs> you need to be careful with that with that so after this move uh knight to g8 we can continue this position cre uh, creating problems on the king side for example knight h7 it's check the king is forced to play to e7 and for example here we have uh, several different approaches i like this one and even this one this one probably is better because if bishop plays to g5 uh the we, we are threatening to win the queen and after f6 well this will fall everything will fall apart uh the position is finished with queen takes g7 checkmate so of course here it wasn't man mandatory to play f6 but the the reality is that this position is completely lost for white after this uh, offer of uh, the bishop for example uh, here probably the only idea is to play knight to f6 and after that we can uh, Play this or take uh, immediately i prefer this one because the knight is pinned and we are attacking with everything we have so uh, this position uh, this game will finish very quickly so we have seen that in this case this works because we have several advantages this square is ours this is ours too and black doesn't have the um, possibility of playing a knight to those two squares oh another aspect uh, black doesn't have possibility to put a black bishop here too so uh because the bishop would control the g5 square so we have seen that after this check king g8 loses quickly uh for the players with uh, higher level they probably will try to survive with king g6 of course the, um, the position is already lost for black but they will try to survive a little bit playing king to g6 but the thing is that this isn't uh, possible uh exists several different ways of winning this game uh for me the simplest of course this is playable but for me the simplest is just to advance the h4 h5 i'm going to show after h4 probably most players will play rook to h8 and here we can continue playing h5 because the thing is that if rook takes uh, the rook uh, is lost so this isn't possible this will finish in checkmate in two moves because after king plays to um, f5 g4 is checkmate so and the alternative isn't easy because if King plays here, I just can play this stuff and I'm going to win the queen. So the position is completely won. And if king plays to f5, <laughs> this is terrible. So this is checkmate on g4. So h4, h5 for me, of course, it depends on the, the, the position that you are playing. But most times I prefer to advance h4, h5 because I know that I will create a lot of problems and uh, in terms of the calculations uh, I, don't need, I don't need to calculate uh, very much so uh, continuing with our examples uh, this is our uh, second case uh, just to show how to use this greek gift um, sacrifice so first we already know we need to evaluate if it's possible to have a knight on those squares it isn't possible second uh, we have control to g5 no Third, we have control to h5. Yes, with the queen. So we need to calculate a little bit. So if bishop takes, king takes, queen check, king will need to play again to g8. And now we need to see if we have uh, something good or if we do don't have nothing. Well, here we have a very interesting idea. And this is a completely different position from the last one that we have seen because the queen 
is at c5. And because of this reason, we will have the queen here and we have knight e4. And because of these facts, we will be able to control the g5 square and we will win this game. So let's see. Bishop takes, brilliant stuff. King takes, queen check, king g8, and now look. Knight e4, and if the pawn takes, the queen will take the queen. So this is very, very strong. And the thing is that, okay, the queen is being attacked. We can try to play queen to e7, but after that, I don't know the, if, if uh, uh, queen e7 makes sense, because knight g5 and the game is over. The queen needs to sacrifice, because even if this is played, uh, this is a kiss of the dead. So uh, the game is, is done. So this, in reality, this is a position from a game between Gatakamski and Samuel Schaupland. So uh, Gatakamski has, has won this game. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I think this has been played um, on a championship, but I don't know where uh, right now. But uh, well, uh, after that, this is the only move. Of course, uh, if the black player is a very strong player, uh, he can try to create uh, some kind of problems. But after knight g5, queen can try to, to defend here. Uh, this square, but for me this is just too complicated because e4 will close the diagonal and then we will win this game. Of course, when you enter uh, on the correct Greek gift and you are the attacker, you will create a lot of damages to your opponents. So, um, assuming that you're, you will be doing that on the official game, I suggest you to work a lot the tactical play, because here you will have always tactical moves. For example, even if the rook plays here, first we can take this pawn, yeah? And after that, queen again, and what is the difference? The difference is that we can give this check, and of course, he will try to run away with the king. Uh, these are two pretty strong players uh, playing chess. But even on this position, uh, this will be complicated. Even, even if white doesn't play the best moves, I will win always material. That's the reason we have taken this pawn, because the knight controls this square. And because of these facts, we will win uh, the pawns on the king side. And after that, we have a lot of potential because we have two passed pawns. So. Even on this position, the material is even, but uh, evaluating the position, this is very complicated. For example, this move finishes on a checkmate, and if king plays here, uh, well, I can always uh, play knight, forking the king and the rook, so this is all complicated for black. So, we've already seen two positions. This third is similar, but... Now, I, I want you to think, if you want, you can put on pause, think a little bit, because next we will see the defensive resources, and uh, I have a resume to, to show you, and then we will go to the practical exercises and um, official games. So I have three examples of each um, point. So here, of course, this square, is, uh, isn't uh, being controlled uh, by black. This is mine, this is mine, let's sacrifice. So, bishop takes. Imagine, if was black to move, I would suggest this move, h6. Because after h6, you don't have nothing. So, uh, it's kind of a defensive resource. Uh, and uh, uh, next we will talk a little bit more about that. So, after bishop takes, king takes, knight check, everything is correct. This is very easy. This is done. And again, after king plays to g6, again, it's the same idea. I will suggest, do you remember? h4 and h5. Here, it's different because uh, white has already made the castle king side. But after rook takes, this is just too complicated because d6, the thing is that king here loses immediately because of that. And, um, and if he tries to, to do this kind of stuff, we can uh, take on passant. And after that, well, this is over because 
this will finish uh, on a lot of damages. <laughs> we we if black plays correctly, we won't be giving checkmate right now. But we have one material, five points, uh, something like that. And of course, he, um, if king plays on the other direction, this is checkmate. So it's quite simple. And the thing is that this Greek gift. Uh, the most common way of, of giving the Greek gift is with this sacrifice of bishop on h7, uh, giving check with the knight and entering on the h5 square with the queen. Uh, but that's not the only way of doing the Greek gift, and I'm going to show you uh, in the end of the video. So let's jump to our defensive resources. So for now, you already know how to give this... Uh, uh, checkmate, uh, checkmate uh, how to do this Greek gift sacrifice. Now, let's look at this position. So, here is white to play. And, um, uh, we are see seeing the, the black's point of view for one reason. I want you to think if it's possible for white to do the sacrifice on h7. If you want, you can put on pause, okay? Uh, the answer is no. It isn't possible. It isn't good. Because after bishop takes h7, king takes knight check, king can go to g8. And the thing is that after queen plays to h5, we have the resource bishop f5. Be careful with that, because the bishop will control forever the square. So, for example, after bishop g6, this is kind of easy to play for black. And black is winning by two points so very important you need to see if uh, black has potential to defend the h7 square on f5 this is very 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 important serious i i've already lost several uh, games on the internet because of because of this kind of stuff another another um, stupid thing but uh, it happens is uh, yeah, for example, black has a knight here, and we do the sacrifice. Yeah, it doesn't work too, because uh, if we this knight was here, bishop takes, uh, king takes, knight check, king here, queen h5, and knight defends everything. So be careful, because even though a pawn can be here, you need to see if it's possible to defend with knight f8. This leads us to our next position, this one. So here, white has made the Greek gift <laughs> sacrifice. And we need to think if this is um, dubious or if this is good. And well, this is bad for white. Again, why is that? Simple. Because after king takes, knight check, of course, I'm, I don't want to take because bishop takes next. Uh, king will play to g8. And after queen h5, of course, is terrifying to see this position. But the thing is that, that black is one. Because we don't have knight f6, f6, but it's possible to defend on f8. So after that, the position is completely one. If you compare this uh, position on the fish, the fish will say that black has uh, almost three clean points of advantage. So this position is completely one for black. So this leads us to several rules that we need to be careful. So. Uh, when we talk about the Greek gift, we need to sas satisfy some uh, conditions. And the attack to succeed, we need to control the g5 square. Uh, the attacker's knight can move to g5 to deliver the check. We have already talked about that. The attacker's queen can join the attack often by h5. Uh, uh, but h5 is uh, more than sufficient. The defender cannot move a piece to defend f7 or h2, uh, according to the colors, and the defender cannot easily re reorganize his defense. Very important. I haven't uh, talked about that yet. On the note, if exists a bishop defending the squares on e7 or e2, according to the color, you will need the help of uh, an advance of h4 or h5 
okay so these are the rules you want to satisfy all of these conditions so now we've already seen all the rules uh, everything how to do this sacrifice now let's go to our exercises so i have three exercises for you and then i will show three positions from official games and they some of them are different from these exercises that we have seen so let's go so the the first position is uh, uh, white to play and is a, in my opinion, typical possession. The second one is is quite different, but uh, but well, we need to see this all because um, the Greek gift is just a sacrifice of the bishop. The concept is is just that. So let's go. Uh, here is white to play, and you want to think about uh, if bishop can take on h7 or not is this good or is this bad so uh, it isn't possible to defend on those two squares with the knight uh, this square is available for the knight but the question here is that the queen cannot attack on the h file because the queen is at d2 for this we need to calculate a little bit because we have an octopus so yeah this is a, a very good advantage to have a knight here later we will do a, a video about that so after bishop takes king takes knight checks uh if king goes for example to g6 we can try to for example uh play h4 h5 or even try to play the queen by d3 uh the thing is that Queen d3 is always a way of reaching the h file. So, bishop takes, king takes, knight check, king here. And, for example, h5 with king d3 is an idea. And if the king goes back, we can threaten checkmate here and then reach h7. Let's see. Bishop takes. Uh, here, first idea. If king doesn't take, well... If king doesn't take, we can play knight g5, and this position is completely won. We've already seen something like that, so this is terrible. So it's it's over. This will finish on the checkmate by force. So here, of course, after bishop takes, uh, the the only thing we want to calculate serious is um, king takes because uh, when we do a sacrifice, we need to recover the material with. Uh, some interest so after king takes of course knight g5 this is always the same and after king plays here now we have queen d3 threatening to give checkmate on h7 very important and the thing is that for example f5 we can take on passant and we continue threatening this checkmate so uh, this is completely one of course uh, black can try to continue this way and okay after queen h7, king plays to f8. Here, uh, we need to calculate a little bit to see if we can finish with this game. Yes, it's possible. So we can play queen to h8. King will try to run away. I don't know where. Uh, and after that, we can take g7. And we are threatening to take another pawn. Of course, we are still losing by one pawn. But do you believe that you are going to lose this game? It isn't possible. It, it, it isn't... Uh, I think it is completely impossible. This is a completely one position. For example, after Rook tries to prevent the loss... Uh, well, this is checkmate, no? It's over. And... I don't know how can we defend that. This knight doesn't have any available square. So, uh, probably... The only idea is to give all the material to try to survive because this this game is over. Uh, I don't know, bishop c6, I don't know. But, well, in this position, you are already winning by one point. So, this is already very, very... Uh, we have compensation to do the sacrifice uh, already. Uh, here, probably, I don't know, castle, and we continue this game happy with a smile on, on our face. So this is very good. So next position. 
uh, another uh, exercise and here we are playing with white and again uh, black doesn't have access to those squares the bishop is attacking this square we don't have access to the g5 square but we have another idea the queen can go to h5 and we have uh, a very good rook with potential to go to the h5 so and we need to see another thing we can have potential to give checkmate if the queen uh, goes to h5 so when we calculate those kind of things we need to evaluate all of our pieces because even though we know uh, the theory about the Greek gift, we need to calculate deeply everything. So, after bishop takes, king takes, queen check, here knight d5 is too strong because we are threatening to give checkmate in one. So, after that, for example, black can try to prevent the immediate loss uh, because the queen cannot protect this square. Uh, and after that, queen to h6 finishes with all the suffering of the black. Even knight here, this is uh, threatening of checkmate in one move. And even this move wins because knight takes, pawn takes, and then it's checkmate. So this is very strong. One possible continuation is this one, and the game is completely lost. So, very simple. Let's exercise. Uh, this one. Okay. Here white has advanced the kingside pawns and uh, it seems that it isn't possible to sacrifice the bishop on h7 so important on the greek gift we don't sacrifice always on h7 the greek gift is a sacrifice of a bishop so if we don't sacrifice this bishop we can calculate the sacrifice of the other bishop <laughs> or both uh, not, uh, we will see this uh, <laughs> I was talking in Portuguese uh, we will see this uh, on this video not to sacrifice everything so here the thing is that after bishop takes king takes queen here we can have potential because after king went to h8 we can advance the pawn threatening to give checkmate on this square because of the presence of the bishop so this has a lot of potential so because of the fact that we are already threatening checkmate this uh, position isn't defendable because uh, the black pieces aren't coordinated they are all <laughs> on the center so after knight we can continue with the knight uh, pushing another piece to the attack and after that we are threatening this checkmate and this position is already won because here we can advance the pawn and now we have a brilliant sacrifice of the queen because here uh, it isn't possible to survive because after queen uh, king takes pawn takes with checkmate so beautiful brilliant stuff this has been played by a 24 a 26 rating player so beautiful 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 stuff so again a sacrifice on g7 because of the potential on the h7 square so too strong so we've already seen several different approaches and several different ideas but we haven't seen the best players playing this greek gift sacrifice how do they play these kind of possessions do they play the same as we play or uh, do they see completely different ideas well uh, we will see three different uh, positions from uh, real uh, games the first one has been played by emmanuel lasker and his opponent was johan Hermann bauer and well this is a very beautiful uh, greek gift sacrifice because uh, here, uh, I've, I've already shown uh, on another video here uh, because of the initiative. And Emmanuel Lasker will find a brilliant combination. And of course, when we uh, calculate, we need to use to our intuition. And of course, uh, Lasker, I don't know what uh, has he been thinking about on the game, but 
probably uh, he has used uh, his intuition because here the thing is that okay exists the knight here uh, but we are attacking h7 and g7 and we have the queen here and the thing is that we have two potential to enter with the rook so let's get a scene bishop takes king takes queen takes check so because of the fact that he sacrificed the bishop this is already a greek gift so king and now bishop sacrifices and the thing is that black is forced to take because or else uh, black will lose a lot of material and after king takes queen and he will recover uh, material and he will win at least a queen so after pawn advance rook queen rook takes king takes and well the material isn't equal because now he has queen to d7 and it's completely won so he has won a few moves later but we don't need to see but uh, this position is completely won because he is winning by three clean points so the next position has been played uh, by edgar cole another player and edgar cole uh, was pretty strong and he will uh, do a greek gift sacrifice uh, against john james or Hanlon. so this is a old game this game has been played at 1930 and here uh, the thing is that he has taken and first i want you to think on the black uh, by the back a black point of view if you were playing black how would you prevent the Greek gift sacrifice? It's quite simple. If you play knight to f6 or even h6, here Edgar Cole won't be able to do this Greek gift sacrifice. But the thing is that black has played that. And after that, the position is completely demol demolishing for black because bishop takes and uh, of course knight g5 because the bishop is protecting this knight and after king plays to g6 uh well <laughs> this let's go to the party because here h4 let's go that's the reason because i i like edgar cole because he plays the the concepts correctly very well and after rook let's go rook takes of course here in, in this position uh it it wasn't necessary to do this stuff because he is completely won the idea we have seen before h5 is much simpler because after rook takes uh, here he doesn't have nothing because of the fact that we have everything we want uh even on this case rook takes pawn takes and this king is completely exposed so queen to d3 will lead to a checkmate if you want you can calculate and then tell me on the comments if uh, if you found the checkmate so here he continued with rook takes and after knight uh, this game is already completely over uh, again uh, it wasn't necessary to sacrifice the rook because of course knight takes it's it's easier uh we uh, give uh, a check to the king and we will uh, take the queen but of course it complicated a little bit but the thing is that we, this will finish on a checkmate so very strong edgar cole here finding the greek gifts uh, ideas last position and uh, this one is uh, very pretty too and this has been played uh, on 1985 the year that i have born and um playing with white was emir Dizdarevich, i think it's correct and with black anthony miles and here uh, it's very visual at uh, this position because anthony miles uh, has um, advanced the rook to f6 so it's kind of obvious that he wants to attack uh, how will he continue that? Well, the position is this one. So it's advanced, but just for you to see. After bishop takes, king takes, queen check, king here. This isn't the best move, but it's very, very pretty. Because, of course, this is similar to the position we have seen 
of Emmanuel Lasker. But what have Anthony Mild seen? He has seen that White has uh, at uh, F4 to defend everything. But of course, after that, we can take and okay, the position is complicated because this pawn is, uh, isn't very well play placed. But okay, it will be complicated for White to play this position. But he has played bishop f3. And the thing is that here, white continued with the knight. And this game is completely finished. Because bishop takes, pawn advances, and now uh, he will enter with the rook and the game is completely won. But this last position is kind of interesting. Because what if white had played a different thing? For example, uh, how about, sorry, sorry, how about after this rook to e1, what would black do? Because here it isn't simple to continue this position. For me, probably white would have won this game if he just had played rook to e1. Why is that? Because after bishop takes pawn, the thing is that the queen is open. And because of this fact, I can take. Because after rook plays to f6, here, uh, we can play knight e5. And it isn't simple to give this check, because the knight is, is controlling. And if rook plays to h6, well, he is threatening to give checkmate. But we have always defenses, because we have the square of f1. No, very interesting this this game. Uh, the thing is that after that, probably the only idea would be queen to g4. And yes, in uh, practical terms, probably white will do always a mistake because the position is very complicated to defend. Bishop f1 is the only um, idea possible. And after, for example, rook to f6, I think here. Uh, Probably knight d2 will lead to advantage for white. So it isn't easy to, to win this game. But the thing is that we are humans. And uh, when we play humans against humans and not against engines, uh, it's normal that somebody commits uh, any mistake. And this kind of positions isn't easy to play for humans, because the king is exposed, uh, black has a, a lot of activity, and black uh, doesn't have a good coordination between his pieces. And for this fact, he has uh, lost quickly this game, uh, Emir Diz Darevich. And he was, uh, and he is, a good player. So uh, I think a 23 something uh, hundred players, so pretty strong. So today we have seen the Greek gift sacrifice. Sorry for the length of the video, but I think if you didn't know, knew this um, sacrifice, you learned something new. And now you have ability to win games with this technique. So I hope you win a lot of games with this. And please, if you win some game, and if you learned this with me, Please put on the comments because I want to see your games and I will be happy for you. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget, subscribe. And tomorrow we will be here at the same hour to talk about chess. Till tomorrow, have a good night. Bye bye. <laughs>